Hello, and welcome to a new series on my channel, which is where I'm going to be showing you the Dutch Defense, which is an opening which I've been playing for quite a while, maybe about two years, uh, pretty much since I started um, really taking chess seriously. Uh, it's been my main repertoire against d4, and uh, I'm going to be sharing some of my knowledge and experience of it with you. Um, so the way this series is going to work is I'm going to be going over um, first some sidelines, such as the Hopton attack uh, here, also the Staunton Gambit, the London system, etc. And then uh, eventually I'm also going to go into some more main lines, uh, such as the systems with g3, bishop g2, and uh, more topical things for white to play. Um, without any further ado, let's uh, talk about the Hopton attack. So the Hopton attack, for those of you who don't know, uh, is uh, originates after the moves d4, f5, and now bishop g5. Uh, now the idea that white has here is after black plays a move such as knight f6, uh, he wants to eventually take on f6 and force black to weaken their pawn structure. Um, I should note before uh, I go into any uh, more detail that you can completely avoid the Hopton attack by playing the move e6 on move 1. However, the obvious drawback is you have to be prepared to go into uh, a French defense, uh, or potentially some kind of Franco-Sicilian or even like e6-b6 against e4, which I can probably recommend uh, if you do want to play e6. Um, however, uh, I was not much of a fan at the time I started playing the Dutch, so I uh, did play the move f5 on move 1, and this means that I have to know what to do against the Hopton attack. So, um, the move I'm going to be recommending is uh, to knight f6, but I'm just going to go over some alternatives um, that black can try, and also the reasons that I'm not recommending those. So, one good option for black is the move g6. However, um, there was a couple of lines which I found quite scary to play against, such as uh, after knight c3 and bishop g7, white can play the immediate and quite scary e4. Um, and after f takes e4, not only is there knight takes e4, but white can even play the move f3, which is a very dangerous and scary gambit, uh, where white sacrifices a pawn in exchange for some very good development, uh, and opening the f-file against black's uh, relatively vulnerable king. So that's the reason that I didn't much like to play that line. And then if you really want scary, you can consider playing the move h6. Now, this move is uh, by all means playable, however, you have to be very careful and you have to absolutely know what you're doing. Uh, so. After the move h6 and bishop h4 and g5, which, which is the main line, um, white's best move is e4. And um, you know an opening is risky when white can threaten mate on move 4 of the game. Um, and obviously queen h5 is the threat, and so black has to play the move knight f6. And now after e5, uh, again, black has to play the move e6. So black is really walking on a tightrope of only moves. Uh, the idea is that if white takes on f6, we can win back our piece, uh, and also this bishop is trapped anyway, it's because after bishop g3 and f4, um, there's no way for the bishop to escape. However, after a move such as bishop d3, the light squares around black's king are very much vulnerable, and uh, black, uh, white often ends up sacrifi sacrificing a piece, such as after d5, bishop takes f4, g takes f4, and uh, not even taking this, and, ex and instead just going for a uh, attack based on the light squares, such as knight h3, c5, and knight takes f4, with the g6 square in particular looking very vulnerable. So these are two options that black has. Um, you can, by all means, go into some more investigation on your own. Uh, I might leave some links in the description for places you could do that. Um, but I'm going to be talking about the move knight f6. So. The main move after knight f6 for white is the move knight c3. Um, again, white is putting, hinting at the idea of e4 potentially after taking on f6 or with a pin, uh, perhaps. Um, and so what black needs to remember to play, and this is very important, is an early d5. Uh, this prevents white from playing the move e4 anytime soon, as it is now controlled by two pawns. Um, uh, so here white has a couple of options. Uh, the first, uh, and main, is to take on f6 um, with the bishop. And now after e takes f6, e3, uh, another important thing to remember is to play uh, quite early the move bishop to e6. Now the reason for this um, will become evident soon, uh, and that is the move bishop to d3. 
Now, the point of this move is uh, it targets the, F the f5 pawn, and uh, it's quite important that you play, uh, you remember to play bishop e6 and queen d7 in time, uh, or, or else you could end up with some trouble, such as with queen f3, or even knight e2 and then knight f4, which will attack the bishop and force you to leave the f5 pawn or the d5 pawn. Um, so, uh, continuing on with this line, um, black should play the move knight c6, and now after knight g2, um, black has to be careful and remember that the move queen d7 uh, is needed to protect the f5 pawn. Uh, otherwise, knight f4 will be a problem. But now black can play bishop f7, the d5 pawn will be protected, and uh, so will the f5 pawn by the queen. Now, uh, I'll just go into a couple more moves, and uh, after a3, um, castles, queen f3, uh, black can play the move g5, kicking the knight off the very good f4 square, and after knight e2, I feel like I would, I should probably just remind people to not allow the move bishop takes f5, uh, and in fact, I um, suggest probably the move f4, which is uh, a very strong pawn sacrifice, uh, the idea of which is, um, if white were to take, then uh, black plays g4, and after queen g3, h5, and the white's queen especially, and pretty much all of his other pieces uh, are very um, misplaced. The queen is not really in danger of getting trapped, but not definitely not having a very nice time here on g3. This knight, which was once such a great piece, is now pretty hopeless. And even the knight on c3 uh, can't really go anywhere, as if it goes to b5, you can even play a6 and just kick it out. Um, anyway, returning to um, alternatives on move 4. Uh, one option is e3. e3. Um, so this is after four, uh, d5. White can also play the move e3, um, which keeps the pressure of this uh, a little longer. But I think white almost always does end up taking on f6 eventually. I'll show a line where white doesn't and what to do against that. So here, you end up pretty much playing a stonewall structure. Definitely uh, with very good control of the light squares, uh, especially the e4 square. And after something like knight f3, bishop e7, bishop d3, castles, castles, and knight e4, uh, it's definitely a very harmless position, and black has nothing to be worried about here. Um, another option for white is to on move 4 after d5 is to play the move f3, uh, which is a slightly dubious setup, as you can see from the evaluation bar. Um, but it is uh, worth learning some, uh, some theory against this. Uh, here, again, you can go for a stonewall-like setup, preventing what white's uh, clear plan is, which is e4. Uh, and it's quite good to know. So white will, white will cast the queen side in the setup and potentially try to play for e4 with rook e1. But it's good to know the move bishop b4, which can be very annoying for white to deal with, especially if they're going to play, if they're going to castle queen side, they're going to be much more reluctant to push pawns around their king. So bishop b4 can uh, pin the knight on c3 pretty, very annoyingly and prevent a move like e4. Uh, now after something like e3, castles, and knight h3, um, again, well, with the idea of knight f4, again, black is doing very much okay, uh, with white only having a tiny advantage of plus 0.1 here. Um, so the, the only other thing to really go over is uh, that white can, uh, white can play the very trickier move order option of taking uh, on, on f6 on move 3, uh, instead of uh, instead of on move four, uh, delaying the move knight c three. Um, now here, black takes with the e pawn, um, and after e three, uh, I should probably go over c four quickly, uh, which is another option. Again, you want to get in d five, even though they can take. Uh, and after knight c three, bishop b four is a very uh, nice uh, move and an active place to develop the bishop to. Um, but after e3, which is definitely the main move, you want to play d5, and then white can go for a different setup here, which is probably the reason why this can be uh, trickier. Uh, and that setup is knight d2 and knight e2, with the idea of putting these knights, uh, after playing c4, of putting these knights on um, d2 and c3, with very good control of the e4 square. But uh, after something like bishop b4, again, a nice move to remember, putting pressure on these uh, knights here, and maybe bishop e2. Um, black's doing very well. You can. Uh, I'd, I'd actually recommend 
taking, even though you do give up the bishop pair, uh, you hamper white's pawn structure and inhibit their plan of, of an early e4. Um, and even something like b5, holding onto the pawn that white sacrificed, uh, could potentially be very strong. Um, and uh, anyway, that's probably going to be pretty much all that there is to cover. Obviously, you can go into more detail. As I said, I'll leave some links about uh, where you can look up um, things about the Staunton, uh, not Staunton Gambit, the Hop and Attack, uh, and just openings in general. Uh, and with that, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy it, please do consider liking, subscribing, commenting, etc., etc. Uh, just so, you know, YouTube algorithm, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and anyway, thank you very much, and goodbye.